So before you jumped out there on your own, you're working at your full-time job, you're nine to five, you're doing that. You decide to start this community via social media at the time. Yeah. At what point did you discover, I'm not the only one that's battling these issues. There are other people around the world that are battling these same issues that I am, and they're now exchanging recipes with me. Yeah, okay. Um, there were a few times. I think the first time it really became real for me was, now this is back in 2012, and I don't know if you can remember at the time, but remember this is not when the Amazon was really around. Amazon was not a big factor then. Mm -hmm. So a website called bodybuilding.com. This is where you got all your supplements, all, all your protein powders and pre-workouts and, and everything and all your, you know, your stuff, right? So I was a huge fan of this site, and it was one of the top websites in the world at the time, like top 100 websites. Like, that's how big they were. Um, and I got a message on Facebook. This is now in the top part of 2013. Started my blog in the summer of 2012. The top part of 2013, I had a big explosion in followers because the top of the year, didn't really realize that. And I got this email on Facebook from, the, um, from some guy from bodybuilding.com. I thought it was spam, so I didn't respond to it. Two weeks later, I got a follow-up asking if we can you know, hop on the phone. So I was like, okay, let me respond to it. I said, yes. So I'm over working with Dell at the time. So I go into this conference room, take this phone call. I think it's just going to be a quick one. They have the entire editorial board staff around the table, the editor-in-chief of bodybuilding.com, and he says, hey, my athletes love your meals. Will you come and write for us? Are you and serious? I'm, and that's what I said. I was like, do you know what I look like? <laughs> I'm, I'm not, listen, I don't want to, just, listen, don't run from me, but I don't look like your athletes. I don't look like these bodybuilders and these physique models out there. I don't. And they're like, we know, we just love your content and your, and your like, approach to food and to calorie conscious cooking. Will you write for us? And so that was the first time that I realized that maybe there's something to this and that if I can even inspire people who are already fit, people who are the aspirational physique models, then there's got to be other people out there too that are just like me who are in that in-between, who are trying to find their happy place in fitness. Oh, that's such a great story, man. I mean, that's a great story. So is it at that moment that you realize, I got a real business on my hand and start to think to yourself, maybe... If I, because a lot of my audience are entrepreneurs yeah. and I always encourage them to, you know, start their business while they're working at yeah. another job. There are more than eight hours in a day. And it's, you know, it's that eureka moment where you realize what I'm doing is more than just a hobby. It's more than just pa my passion. It could benefit other people. So is that yeah. the moment for you where you discovered this, this is more than just a, a passion of mine. I can actually turn it into a business. Yeah, it wasn't at that moment. That was just to, you know, to have my curiosity peak that there was something that was something different about it. It wasn't until like a year and a half later, I'm sitting around the Thanksgiving table where I told my family just on a whim, I said, I think I want to quit my job. And everyone stopped eating and said, oh, okay, good. Finally, this is the right move for you. And that was a really big moment for me. Um, back okay, up, Kevin, I'm sorry to interject. Yeah. What made you come to that point to, to finally let those words come out your mouth? Right. I'm going to get to that. So backing up, though, what led up to that was this. I realized that I was falling in love with this work on the site a lot more. I had gotten the opportunity to actually work from home, and I started to miss meetings because I'm sitting there blogging and going back and forth and shooting content myself, and I've got a meeting. And I was like, Kevin, what are you doing? And you were a stellar five-star employee, and now you are missing – meetings doing this stuff and then another sign for me was the fact that I started to get irritated people said hey Kevin can you do this so and so and so and so and I'm like what a stupid thing why are they doing this oh my gosh I cannot believe they're asking me to go and do this and I had such a negative attitude and sometimes we're, we're so inclined to go ahead and blame the negative attitude on them and everybody else when really it's just us carrying out carrying that around and I remember um you know, I think it was my dad that told me, sometimes when you get an attitude check like that, it's not the environment, it's you. So you need to move on. And I'm, and I'm thankful for that friction because if it was comfortable, 
then you'd stay. Mm -hmm. If you weren't having that, then you'd kind of stay and you wouldn't take that leap. So it was that coupled with the fact that I was, you know, that I'm missing meetings and that I was just so curious. And um, this is one of the, um, that I've always told this story. People love this story. Um, but around the same time, I had a job offer from Google. Google found out what I was doing and they offered me a job to come and work as a community manager. Um, and it was going to be a good job. They flew me out to Palo Alto, did the interview, got the offer. And I was just really hesitant and reluctant about it. Didn't say yes, didn't say no. And I went back to an old boss of mine um, who I really trusted and admired. And I went into the office. He's a Southern guy, really big and Southern. And he, um, he said, well, everyone keeps talking about this fit man could thing you're doing here in the office. I don't know what the hell it is. And then he says, but if you're asking me if you want to take a job offer from Google or not, that means that you don't want the job offer from Google. Ooh. So here's my advice to you. He said, um, you are a smart man. I would hire you back today once you left for company, but I would hire you back today if you want to come back with us. But you don't want to do that either. Here's my advice. He said, do this fit men cook thing. Because at the end of the day, you want to be able to set your grandkids down on your knee and say, here's this thing called fit men cook. Here's how I F the whole thing up. Or here's how I did it well, go and do something even better. And what I took from that story is that sometimes it's not the missed opportunity that actually hurts the most. It's the haunting. It's the haunting of what if. What if I could have made it? What if I could have jumped out like on my own? And I thought from, his, from him saying that, it really spoke to that what if. And it also told me, and he said, I'd hire you back today. Sometimes you got to step into your own dopeness yep. and realize that you can make it work. If you've made it this far and you've been able to juggle a full-time job and your passion, then you are smart enough to do it again. So bet on yourself. Don't jump out there and be foolish. You need to have a plan. But sometimes you just have to bet on yourself and take that step. So when I said at the Thanksgiving table, which I was not even planning to do, I had to say it out loud. And when I said it out loud, it became real for me and everybody else. So that means like there's no backing out now. And the response I got from my family, like, oh, good, finally, we had never even discussed me quitting my job. We had never even, that had, wasn't even a factor. The fact that they were thinking about it too was confirmation for me that I'm doing the right thing. You know, great, great points especially for any aspiring entrepreneurs out there. Now, I, I, I believe God gives us these cues. Mm -hmm. You went in talking to your boss about leaving a company. Yeah. And your boss encourages you to start a business. Yeah, there yeah, yeah. There not be any better sign from God at that point. That's unheard of, number one. So were you and your boss, were you all like friends outside of work? Well, first off, that was my former boss that I went back to, but my current boss at the time, he was um, a huge proponent of what I was doing. And the funny thing, I never even told people this, but he knew what I was doing on the side. I never told anybody what I was doing with Fitman Cook. Once they, I think the company found out because South by Southwest is one of the biggest tech conferences or is the biggest tech conference really like in the world. And it's a huge badge of honor whenever you get invited to go and speak. So I got invited to go and speak about the intersection of technology and health and wellness um, and social media. And so they saw, and all of Dell is always gonna be down there because it's in Austin, Texas. And I, I was not invited by my team at Dell to go, but they, they saw that I was gonna be down there because I was a speaker. So they're like, what is Kevin doing? <laughs> <laughs> where he's invited to become a speaker and we're going, we're paying all this money to go. So, um, but they were a proponent of that too. So um, of course they didn't know that I was going to be quitting my job, but they're, but Dell is a company that actually um, is all about passion projects um, and people doing that. So I don't think that they were trying to do it so that way I would leave the company, but yeah, if for what it's worth, they, they knew, I didn't know that. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.